Ancient Greece was a land of great renown. Famed for the great diversity of city-states as well as political systems, we know of the Hellenic world as being divided into several related groups, namely Ionians, Dorians, Aeolians, and Achaeans. However, during the Bronze Age, the inhabited landscape of Hellas was a bit different. Besides the ever-present Achaeans, who were the chief constituents of the Mycenaean civilization, Greece also appeared to be populated with various prehistoric groups and tribes. While they largely remain an unsolved puzzle when it comes to the contemporary historical records, many of those primeval peoples were extensively mentioned and in some cases celebrated throughout Greek mythology and even history. Among the most prominent in ancient Greek traditions, were the Pelasgians. Pelasgians, or Pelasgoi, were extensively mentioned by the ancient Greeks in various contexts and capacities. However, the background and origins of these peoples, as well as their relation to the Greeks themselves, remains enigmatic, as even the ancient writers offered different and sometimes contradictory theories and definitions. According to the ancient sources, Pelasgians consisted of various groups and tribes that had lived scattered in the area of ancient Greece in the dim past and were indigenous to the land. Their relations to the Hellenes, as well as to each other, remains ambiguous, with the Pelasgoi variously being described as Greek, non-Greek, proto-Greek and semi-Greek. With these vastly different and even opposing descriptions, it is difficult to conclusively determine their identity, or even decipher whether the term was used for a specific group of peoples, or just vaguely referred to the primeval pre achaean population, which may or may not have been included the Hellenic ancestors. During the Bronze Age, they were believed to have inhabited the Aegean region. Pelasgians were different from the Achaeans, the chief tribe that constituted the Mycenaean Greece. In fact, many ancient traditions and mythological accounts recount Achaeans either subduing or pushing the Pelasgians out of numerous areas across Greece during the early times of the Achaean establishment in the land. The Achaeans, or Danaeans as they were alternatively called, represented the main constituent of the Mycenaean Greece, a civilization that had dominated the Aegean Sea during the Late Bronze Age, from approximately 16 to 1200 BCE. The Achaeans traced their origins in Argolis, but eventually came to control most if not all of the palatial centers of the time, including the mainland Greece, Crete, the Aegean Islands, and even gained a foothold in Asia Minor. Their dominance was believed to have been to such extent that many of the ancient writers used the term Achaeans as a general designation for the population that inhabited the land in the Mycenaean times. In the Iliad, for example, Homer uses Achaeans together with the synonymous terms Danaeans and Argives to describe all Greeks that fought in the Trojan War. This also apparently included Pelasgians and other tribes that were not necessarily specifically Achaean. Another issue is that the Hellenic identity was not known to have been firmly formed during the Mycenaean times. The Achaeans, being the dominant group, simply named the whole land after themselves. They certainly did have some affinity with other tribes that spoke same or similar language, but unfortunately, there is no record of to which degree were any of those groups related to the Achaeans themselves and to each other. As such, we have conflicting reports on the Pelasgian connections with the Hellenic tribes that arose later, after the Mycenaean collapse. The first mention of the Pelasgians thus goes back to Homer and Hesiod, both writing in the 8th century BCE. In the Iliad, Groups of Pelasgians were reported on both sides of the Trojan War. The extensive listing of the Achaeans and their allies, called the Catalogue of Ships, mentions Pelasgic Argos, either a city or an area located in Thessaly, whose contingent of 50 ships was under the command 
of Achilles. Besides its obvious Pelasgian origin, the region was home to the Achaeans, Hellenes and Myrmidons, famed for their bravery in the Trojan War. Existence of these peoples in the region, especially the Achaeans, is attributed by the ancient writers to a very early Achaean expedition under Abbas, a king from Argolis. Abbas was said to have conquered Pelasgians in both Phocis and Thessaly, where he respectively founded Abai and Argos, which promptly became known as the Pelasgic Argos, differentiating it from the original Argos in Argolis. By the archaic and classical times, the region of Pelasgiotis emerged as a part of Thessaly, with its chief city being Larissa, presumably coming from a Pelasgian word meaning fortress. Another listing from the Iliad, known as the Trojan Battle Order, which recounted the Trojan allies, mentions Pelasgians among the defenders of Troy. Towards the sea lie the Carians, and the Paeonians with curved bows, and the Lelegs and Cauconis, and the goodly Pelasgians. The chief city of these Anatolian Pelasgians was also named Larissa. In Odyssey, Pelasgian presence is also attested in Crete, where they are noted among the groups inhabiting the island. Homer has Odysseus stating the following. There is a land called Crete in the midst of the wine-dark sea, a beautiful and fertile land. In it are many people, innumerable, and there are ninety cities. There are Achaeans, there are great-hearted Ethiocretans, there are Kidonis and Dorians in their three clans, and noble Pelasgians. Pelasgian settlers on Crete were also acknowledged by later historians who recounted a legend where an Achaean hero, Tectomus, sailed to Crete with Aeolians, who were presumably Achaean, and also Pelasgians in his army, where he defeated the indigenous ruler Cretheos and himself became the king. This myth likely corresponds to the Achaean takeover of the Minoan Crete and also explains the presence of various tribes besides the native Cretans. Homer further mentions Pelasgic Zeus ruling over Dodona in Epirus. This is further referenced by poet Hesiod, who talks of Dodona and the oak tree, seat of the Pelasgians. Hesiod also recounts Pelasgus, the eponymous ruler of the Pelasgians and ancestor of the mythological line of kings in Arcadia and Peloponnese. Pelasgus was said to have been autochthonous to the land, born directly from the soil itself. Similar claims were laid out by Asius of Samos, who described Pelasgus as somewhat of a foundational hero of the Hellenes, calling him God like Pelasgus, whom the black earth gave up. Tragedian Aeschylus, writing in the early 5th century BCE, seems to vaguely merge the ancient Achaean and Pelasgian identities, dating them to a long-gone period, seemingly correlating with the Mycenaean Greece. Speaking of the distant past, Aeschylus recounts a vast kingdom he calls Argos, spanning from Peloponnese all the way to the northern Thessaly. In his play The Suppliants, he mentions King Pelasgus as the ruler of the kingdom and defines the original homeland of the Pelasgians as the region around Argos and Mycenae. Besides striking resemblance to the boundaries of the Mycenaean Greece, this might have been a case of an ancient writer using the term Pelasgians to refer to a vague recollection of the ancient Greek ancestors of the past, thus rather corresponding to the Mycenaean Greeks and not distinguishing a separate Pelasgian identity. Aeschylus's contemporary, Euripides, seems to complement the usage of Pelasgians to describe the Greeks. In his play Orestes, Euripides uses the term Pelasgoi to describe the inhabitants of Argos, who would have clearly been Achaeans at the time. The term is used synonymously with Argives, describing a period in Argolis after Agamemnon's assassination, when Achaeans still served as the general term for Greeks. 
Furthermore, in his play Archelaus, Euripides gives Pelasgians as the original name of the population, which was then by decree changed to Danaeans, which we know is synonymous with the Achaeans. Danaeus, who was the father of fifty daughters, having arrived to Argos, inhabited the city of Inachus, and made a law that those who had before borne the name of Pelasgians throughout Greece should be called Danaeans. When it comes to Greek historians, they too offered different and sometimes opposing theories on the Pelasgians' origins and identity. Akusilaos of Argos, writing in the late 6th century BCE, slightly earlier than the two tragedians, mentions that the inhabitants of Peloponnese were in the earliest times called Pelasgians, after King Pelasgus. In Akusilaos' account, however, Pelasgus was not born from the earth itself, but given as a son of Zeus and Niobe. Hecataeus of Miletus, writing in the late 6th and early 5th century BCE, makes several mentions of the Pelasgians, seemingly agreeing with both Hesiod and Homer in some capacity. He states that King Pelasgus, through his son, served as the ancestor of the Arcadian kings. Furthermore, Hectius assesses that a clan descending from legendary Deucalion was called Pelasgians and that it had ruled Thessaly in the early times, which was at that period called Pelasgia. It was named so after King Pelasgus, who Hectius also gives as a son of Zeus and Niobe. This theory seems to agree with Homer in his assessment of the originally Pelasgian settlements in Thessaly before the appearance of the Achaean colonists from Argos. Hellenicus of Lesbos adds further details and even expands the theory to the origins of the Etruscans. He says that from Pelasgus and his wife Menippe came the lineage of the early Pelasgian rulers in Thessaly, namely Frastor, Amintor, Teutamides, and Nanas. By the time of Nanas, Pelasgians were pushed out of Thessaly by the Greeks, with Nanas leading a colony of settlers to Italy. There, he established himself in Thirhania, also known as Etruria, and colonized the land, thus giving a Pelasgian origin to the Etruscans. Nanas's predecessor, Teutamides, curiously serves as an ancestor of another line of Pelasgians, which came from his other son, Lethus. Those descendants represented the Pelasgian contingent that was allied to King Priam during the Trojan War. Herodotus of Halicarnassus, writing around the same time in the 5th century BCE, extensively mentions Pelasgians and tries to solve the puzzle of their origin. He states the following. I am unable to state with certainty what language the Pelasgians spoke, but we can consider the speech of the Pelasgians who still exist in settlements above Tyrrhenia, in the city of Creston, formerly neighbors to the Dorians who at the time lived in the land now called Thessaliotis, also the Pelasgians who once lived with the Athenians, and then settled Plakia and Scylaki in the Hellespont, and along with those who lived with all the other communities and were once Pelasgian but changed their names. If one can judge by this evidence, the Pelasgians spoke a barbarian language. And so, if the Pelasgian language was spoken in all these places, the people of Attica, being originally Pelasgian, must have learned a new language when they became Hellenes. As a matter of fact, the people of Crestonia and Plakia no longer speak the same language, which shows that they continue to use the dialect they brought with them when they migrated to those lands. As for the Hellenes, it seems obvious to me that ever since they came into existence, they have always used the same language. They were weak at first, when they were separated from the Pelasgians, 
but as they grew from a small group into a multitude, especially when many peoples, including other barbarians in great numbers, had joined them. Moreover, I do not think the Pelasgians, who remained barbarians, ever grew appreciably in number or power. Herodotus also mentions Ionians that originally inhabited the northern Peloponnesian region called Aegealea in the past. Those Ionians were originally called the Aegeali and Pelasgoi before they were complied to move by the Achaean colonists, who subsequently named the region Achaea. According to Herodotus, the Aegean islanders were also of Pelasgian origin, who in the later times took the name Ionians. The Pelasgian origin of the Etruscans was not universally accepted even in the ancient times, and it is unknown what the 5th century historians like Herodotus and Hellenicus based their claims on. Perhaps good relations with the emerging Etruscan cities of the time played a part. The Etruscans, much like the Romans, were heavily influenced by the Greeks when it came to culture, religion and other aspects of their life, and thus claimed some kind of connection to the Hellenic world, dating to the distant past. Later historian Dionysius of Halicarnassus, writing several centuries later, completely disagrees with both Herodotus and Hellenicus when it comes to the Pelasgian origin of the Etruscans, but also with Herodotus' theses of Pelasgians not being Hellenic people. Dionysius asserts that although some Pelasgians did arrive to Italy, they were in fact Greek and certainly different from the Italian natives. Afterwards, some of the Pelasgians who inhabited Thessaly, as it is now called, being obliged to leave their country, settled among the Aborigines, and jointly with them made war upon the Sicils. It is possible that the Aborigines received them partially in hope of gaining their assistance, but I believe it was chiefly on the account of their kingship, for the Pelasgians were a Greek nation, originally from the Peloponnese. They were unfortunate in many ways, but particularly in wandering much and in having no fixed abode. For they first lived in the neighborhood of the Achaean Argos, as it is now called, being the natives of the country according to most accounts. They received their name originally from Pelascus, their king. Pelascus was the son of Zeus, it is said, and Niobe, the daughter of Phoreneus. The mentioned for Aeneas was an early mythological king of Argos, which once again gives vague assertion that Pelasgian and Achaean identities were in some way connected to each other. Dionysius then adds, They migrated from there to Haemonia, later called Thessaly, and drove out the barbarian inhabitants and divided the country into Theotis, Achaea and Pelasgiotis, named after Achaeus, Phtheus and Pelasgus, the sons of Larissa and Poseidon. Dionysius further states that the Etruscans, or the Tyrrhenians, how he calls them, were the Italian natives and did not have a Pelasgian origin. I am persuaded that the Pelasgians are different people from the Tyrrhenians. Indeed, probably come nearest to the truth, who declared that the Tyrrhenian nation migrated from nowhere else, but was native to the country, since it was found to be very ancient nation, and to agree with no other, either in its language or in its manner of living. Such contradictory reports by ancient historians, poets and other writers make it almost impossible for modern scholars to determine anything for certain. A possibility that seems plausible is that the Pelasgians were among the successors of the original Neolithic natives of the Aegean, and over time slowly blended into the Bronze Age culture and civilization of the Greeks. 
It is also possible that the ancient Greeks used such term for all of their ancestors of the dim past, before the time of the great Achaean rulers and heroes, thus establishing the lineage and connection with the mythological autochthonous population that has sprung from the soil itself. In such scenario, whether some Pelasgians were related to the Achaeans, as we find in the Arcadian and Ionian traditions, or other Hellenic or Proto-Hellenic groups, or perhaps distinct indigenous inhabitants, remains uncertain, but it does warrant that all of these predecessors in some way constitute the origins of the ancient Greeks. What do you think? Which theory of the Pelasgian origins seems plausible to you? Do you have your own theory? Please let us know in the comment section, and we'll see you again soon.